welcome you all today we are going to discuss about two algorithms under this mathematics for asymmetric key uh, cryptography under asymmetric uh, key cryptography we need some mathematical basics before moving on to studying any kinds of algorithm okay so first thing is first before moving on to those two algorithms let me tell you what is the basics about first i have to know what is a prime number what is a prime number an integer p is said to be prime when it is having the factors as, as itself when it is divided by itself and the other factor will be one no no other factors it will be having that is said to be an prime number so examples of prime number are 2 3 5 7 examples of composite number the numbers other than prime number are said to be a composite number so it has more than two prime factors that is it will be divided by other number also the prime numbers will be having factors as one and itself no other factors will be there whereas the composite number have uh, other factors also one itself and other factors also this is a difference between your prime and composite number so under this if you know the prime number we are going to discuss about two algorithms one is fermat's theorem another one is your euler's theorem so what is your fermat's theorem states if p is a prime and a is an positive integer which is not divisible by p then according to fermat's he has given a statement that the a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p in other words it can be said as a to the power p is congruent to p mod p so the condition is p must be a prime and a is an positive integer which should not be divisible by p then only we can apply this fermat's theorem so here it has been depicted with an example so here i have taken 18 to the power 19 minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 19 or not where the value of a is 8 and the value of p is 19 okay so p is 19 it is a prime number and a is an positive integer which is 8 then 8 should not be divisible by it is not divisible by 19 isn't it so both the conditions are getting satisfied now according to fermat's theorem i am going to check whether the above statement is true or not so 18 to the power 19 minus 1 that is p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 19 which is given as 18 8 to the power 18 is congruent to 1 mod 19 i have to prove lhs equal to rhs or not so i am going to divide this a to the power 18 as smaller powers i am finding out 8 square that is 64 mod 19 is 7 okay so i know 8 square is 7 so i can substitute it over here a to the power 4 can be written as 7 into 7 7 7 or 49 49 mod 19 is equal to 11 so i know 8 to the power 4 so i can substitute it in a to the power 8 So that is 11 into 11 is 121. 121 mod 19 is again 7. Again, I know 8 to the power 8, so I can substitute it as 8 to the power 16 as 7 into 7. That is 49 mod 19 is already 11. So I know up to 8 to the power 16. So 8 to the power 16 is 11, and 8 to the power square is 7. So 16 plus 2 is 18. So 11 into 7 is 77. 77 mod 19. is equal to 1 so hence my lhs is equal to rhs so according to my algorithm if p is found to be prime and a positive integer a i have which is not divisible by p my fermat's theorem follows so whenever you have been given a problem with some higher powers you check the power number is value is equal to is is a prime number or not and the base value which is not divisible by that prime number if that is the case without calculating without using much calculations you can save time you can apply the fermat's theorem and you can say that that thing to the, the base to the power prime number minus 1 will and mod prime number should be equal to 1 so so that you can easily solve the problem so the next algorithm is euler torsion function What is this Euler torsion function? It is defined as number of positive integers less than n that are relatively prime to n. It is always it is always denoted by phi of n. So it is in other words, it can also be said as residue classes that are relatively prime to n. 
Under Euler torsion function, we have four cases. What are the four cases? Phi of m comma n is m into n is given. If m and n are prime number, okay, this can be written as phi of m into phi of n. And if m is prime number, instead of phi of n, I can substitute it as m minus one. If phi of n and n is prime number, instead of phi of n, I can substitute it as n minus one. Okay, so then p is a prime number or any number phi of something is given and that number is found to be prime number, then the formula is the prime number minus one. And if that number is not a prime, then what is the case? I can rewrite that number as prime number to the power something. Okay, say for example eight. Eight is not a prime number, but I can write eight it eight as in the form of Two to the power three, where two is a prime number. If that is the case, then I can I have a formula prime number to the power i minus p and prime number to the power i minus one. If this is not this case, if p is not a prime and it cannot be written as prime number to the power something, then I can go for the fourth formula, which is n into summation of one minus one by p, where I can include all the factors in this. So I have. Taken an example, and I have explained you at the bottom. Phi of 97 is equal to where 97 is a prime number, so it can be written as 97 minus 1 is equal to 96. The next number is 343. 343 can be written as 7 to the power q, where 7 is a prime number, base number to the power prime number, which is given as 7 to the power q, that is p to the power i minus p to the power i minus 1, where p is 7. 7 to the power i value is 3. So seven to the power three minus seven square, which is three forty three minus forty nine is equal to two ninety four. Next is psi of three forty three. I can also rewrite this three forty three as factors of seven, which can be solved as summation of one minus one by seven, which is equal to three forty three into six by seven. If I have any other factors for this three forty three, I can also include that by multiplying uh, after this one by one minus one by something. Okay. So the fourth case is, as I said, phi of seventy-two can be written as uh, factors of prime numbers. Okay, phi of eight into nine. Okay, so where nine is a prime number, uh, eight and nine are not a prime number. So where eight can be rewritten as two to the power cube. Okay, so two to the power cube. So it will be of this format. So two to the power cube minus two square. So two to the power cube is eight eight minus. Four is equal to four. Similarly, nine. Nine can be nine is not a prime number, but the fact three square I can write it as three square. So three square minus three. So nine minus three is equal to six. This is what twenty four. So you whenever you are asked to calculate the Euler torsion function, check whether it is a prime number. If it is a prime number, then your solution is simple prime number minus one. If it is not a prime number, try to convert that particular number into prime number. To the power something. If that is the case, prime number to the power i minus prime to prime number to the power i minus one. That is the formula. If that is not the case, if it is having more than one factors, then you can move on for the formula n into summation of one minus one by p. So that's all about Euler torsion functions. We also have Chinese remainder theorem and Miller-Rabin tests, uh, test and many more algorithms and theorems under this basics of asymmetric key encryption, which we will be discussing in the upcoming lectures. Okay, thank you.